Hello and welcome. Today we're looking at energy transfers in everyday appliances and here we have a lamp in front of us. This lamp has a power rating of 150 watts. What does that mean to say a lamp has a power rating of 150 watts? Well, it means that 150 joules of energy are transferred per second. 150 joules per second. Watts and joules per second are the same thing. Remember to write the J in a capital as a capital when you're writing J slash S. Now here's a question. How much energy is transferred by this lamp in 15 seconds? How much energy is transferred by this lamp in 15 seconds? Well, if we know in one second we transfer 150 joules, in 15 seconds it's just a case of 150 times 15, or the other way around as I've written there. And if we work that out, we have an answer of, let's put that in the calculator quick, 15 times 150 joules, 2,250 joules. If you wanted, you could write that as kilojoules. That would be 2.25 kilojoules. Okay, so that's how much energy is transferred. And it makes a lot of sense if we use joules per second instead of watts. But what is the correct unit for power? That's not a question, that's a statement. So here we have power in joules per second. But remember, the actual unit is watts. And time in seconds. That means the energy transferred is power times time. And the energy transferred will be measured in joules. Now there is one other way in which we can measure energy transferred, and this is a second equation. So both of these in blue and in red you need to know. And the second equation is energy transferred is charge flow, measured in coulombs, times potential difference. Now if we remember that potential difference actually means energy per coulomb, so potential difference measured in vol volts actually means the same thing as energy per coulomb, it might make sense that energy transferred is a number of coulombs, times the energy per coulomb. But you have to remember, potential difference is measured in volts. It just means energy per coulomb. So we could use that in an equation. And if we knew the charge flow and we knew the energy per coulomb, we could work out energy transferred. OK, now let's have a look at an example. Here we have a couple of appliances. They are running off what we call mains electricity. And mains you might write or show the symbol like that. Mains is an AC supply. A little wiggly line shows an AC supply. And for the UK, the main supply is about 230 volts. The potential difference for the main supply is about 230 volts. Every appliance you have in your home will have a little badge on it, and that badge will have what's called the power rating, amongst other bits of information. So here's the power rating. It says 2,500 to 3,000 watts. So that's a range of powers used by that electric drill. And it runs off the mains. So that mains will be 230 volts. So let's do a little calculation. Imagine we had our drill and it was running at maximum power. So a drill runs at maximum power for 20 seconds. And the question is, what's the energy transferred by that drill? So firstly, we've got to decide what we mean by maximum power. We've got a time of 20 seconds, but what's the maximum power? Well, we need to look at the power rating on our appliance, and you can see there the maximum is 3,000 watts. So we would go with a value of 3,000 watts for the maximum power. So we now have the power and we have the time. So we, our equation that we would use, if you remember from the last slide, is energy is power times time. And that's just a simple case of multiplying 3,000 by 20, and that will give us an answer of 6,000, sorry, 60,000 joules. And we could write that as 60 kilojoules. So that's the energy transferred when that drill runs at maximum power for 20 seconds. For our second example, we've got a charge of 10 coulombs that flows. So what's the energy? Well, we need to use our second equation. So there's our first question, there's our second question. And if you remember, hopefully you can remember it because you are required to remember these. You won't get these in the exam or you might not get these in the exam. Energy is charge times potential difference. The charge is 10, as given in the question. The potential difference, well, we're running off the mains, and we know that the mains is about 230 volts, so we can do 10 times 230. That gives 2,300 joules of energy. Okay, and if you wanted, you could convert that to kilojoules. It would be 2.3 kilojoules. Okay, so there's our energy transferred by those two different appliances running off the mains. Now, this here is a little bit of a challenge. If we are going to get up the higher grades, the 7s, 8s and 9s, we are going to have to be able to do slightly more challenging calculations. So the question is, 
for the information given there, we need to work out firstly the current and the power rating for those two appliances. And I want to know which of those transfers the most energy. So out of the microwave and the food mix mixer, which transfers the most energy? So it might be worth pausing here and giving that a go and see if you can work out the answer from a couple of equations we've learned today and in the past from another video. But if not, you can hang on for a clue. So the clue is we need two equations. Which are those two equations? Well, the first one is what we've looked at as P equals VI in a previous video. And in this video, we've looked at energy is power times time. So you might want to pause now and give those a go. For the first one here, for the current, for the microwave, we need to use this equation here, but we need to rearrange it. So the rearranging gives us I equals power divided by potential difference. And if we plug in the numbers from the table, the power is 920 watts and the potential difference is 230 watts. If we do that calculation, we get a current of four amps. For the second one, we want the power rating. And again, we use the same equation, but no rearranging required this time. So it's power is 230. It's running off the mains. And as we know, the mains is about 230 volts. So it's 230 times six, which is our current. And that gives us an answer of 1380. So the power rating for the food mixer is 1380. Okay, now what about the energy transferred? Well, this is where we use our second equation to work out which transfers the most energy. We use the second equation, and that's power times time. So now it's slightly more straightforward once we've done some other working out there. So for the first one, let's put the answer in there, the power rating for the food mixer. So for the first one, the microwave's power rating is 920 and it ran for 60 seconds. And the second one, the power rating is 1380 and it runs for 50 seconds. Do those calculations and for the first one, you get an answer of 55,200. And the second one, it's 69,000. Remember, both of those are energy transfers, so they're both in joules. Okay, so that was a slightly challenging, not the most challenging you're going to get, but slightly challenging in that we had to use two equations to solve all the answers. For a bonus, have a think about this. Which fuse would go in the plug that powers the microwave and the food mixer based on their currents? We have a choice of a 3 amp fuse, a 5 amp fuse, or a 13 amp fuse. Now, the important thing to remember is that when we have a 3 amp fuse, that means that the fuse will blow if the current goes above 3 amps. Same with the 5 amp fuse. If the current goes above 5 amps, 5 amps, it will blow. And the same for the 13 amp fuse. If the current goes above 13 amps, that will blow, or we should say melt. Okay, so which fuse would we use for the microwave? Well, the microwave runs off 4 amps. The microwave runs off 4 amps, so if we use the 3 amp fuse, that's going to keep blowing. So we need to use the 5 amp fuse for the microwave, M for microwave. And for the food mixer, we need the 13 amp fuse because if we use the 5 amp fuse, it will keep blowing at 5 amps. And the microwave, sorry, the food mixer runs off higher than 5 amps. Okay, so lots to think about in this video, but remember those two key equations. And if you can remember the meanings of those units that we discussed before, that's going to help you with the harder questions that we're going to come across in GCSE Physics and GCSE Combined Science. Okay, so thank you for watching. See you soon.